Thank you, and my guest today is Bill Cole. Hi, Bill. Hello, Ralph. Hi. Thank you for taking time Thank out you. of your busy day to drop by and visit with us. And uh, just to give everybody a notion of what we're going to be doing, why don't we start right off the bat with uh, a song delivered by Bill Cole. And it's from an album called Right Now. Of course, that's what we're going to be discussing later in the program. If you'll allow me, let me pick the track that we start with. We'll start with the title song right now. And this is my friend Bill Cole. Right now In the quiet of this moment Right now If you seek him right now, he's here right now. He is waiting to forgive your sin. Right now, you can know his perfect peace with him. Gently calling right now. Don't wait right now. He is waiting to receive you. It's not too late right now. And you just heard Bill Cole singing a song entitled Right Now. I believe a Jimmy Owens song. Uh, this is an album that is not brand new, but it's easy listening, and it's a good album, and I just thought it would be fun to give it another look-see. Well, thank you, Ralph. I've, as I've said before, this, is, this album was a real joy in the making, and it was a singular experience for me. And I'm glad to hear that... Uh, You'd like to refresh people's memory with Well, you know, actually, we hear a lot of contemporary music these days that seems to need to be very heavy-handed. Now, I don't believe necessarily that contemporary music needs to be heavy-handed with all the uh, electric gadgets, but much of it is pretty roaring, and this album is not. And I'm glad it isn't. Although the songs are all new songs, most all of them. But uh, let's find out a little bit about the Bill Cole tenor that we just heard sing. 
But before we do, Bill, I got to break away for just a moment, okay. and then we'll come back and visit. Ralph Carmichael, back again with my special guest today, Bill Cole. Ralph, if I may, I'd like to interrupt a little and, and uh, refer back to what we were talking about before. The, and, and what was that we were talking well, about? Well, the fact that uh, the songs as I sing them may not be as, uh, you know, handled as heavy as, as oh, their yes. original interpretation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd just like to make the observation that, uh, you know, singers who do not write their own material, they they sort of keep their ears open and their hearts open to find songs that they could say, now that's the kind of a song I could sing and I want to sing because that says it for me. Even they though, should... for example, uh, you might have heard uh, some of these songs treated totally different. That's right. Mm -hmm. and my, my, what do you call it? I guess my artistic sense or something says, no, I can take that and make it my own. A perfect example of that is a song that we're going to play next from your album, My Little World. God of the stars, the sun and the moon, O oh God of the wind and the sea, though you're everywhere, how amazing it is that you Bill Cole and My Little World. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about Bill Cole. He grew up in Detroit uh, mm -hmm. in a preacher's home. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I, too, am a preacher's kid. Yeah, Put her there, right. <laughs> PK. <laughs> right. Uh, had a very uh, pleasant childhood, uh, a very warm home, mm -hmm. and uh, good relationships with the parents. We're a very musical family. Uh, one of the things that eased the chore of washing dishes every night was to harmonize while mm -hmm. we were all we all shared in the washing and the drying and the putting away mm -hmm. the dishes. And my dad would coach us on who was to sing baritone and what notes to sing and who was to sing tenor. And uh, he developed uh, uh, an interest and uh, a capability to mm -hmm. enjoy music. And uh, my mother was an evangelistic piano player, mm -hmm. and so. We're, our life was really surrounded with music. 
I went uh, then to college at Wheaton and uh, studied uh, pre-medicine. I was Is gonna, that right? Yeah, I was going to be a doctor. And because uh, it was my lot to support myself, you know, the preacher couldn't take sure. care of his family and send a boy to college, I decided that uh, maybe I could put my voice to work. So I went to WMBI in Chicago and sang for Don Husted. Is that right? Yeah, I was 19. And... Uh, uh, I started to sing at WMBI. And, and, and Don did, gave you your first job. My first job. And uh, then a few months after that, uh, Don Husted had the opportunity to get a choir together for Beverly Shea, who started his radio program on ABC. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he asked me to sing top tenor in that group, and that went on for seven years and provided you know, the springboard for a professional career. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Now, what was the name? Was that that Club Aluminum? Club Time, yeah. Club Time, sponsored yeah. by Club Aluminum. Oh, I used to listen to that. But yeah. little did I know that you were in the <laughs> choir. <laughs> yeah, I was 19 years old when that mm. started. And it was a good, uh... It was a good proving ground. Don, mm -hmm. of course, is a very thorough musician. Mm -hmm. and had high standards, and, uh... So it was, it was a great experience. Sure. What was your next assignment? Well, I kept, uh... Uh, after I graduated from college, I uh, gave up the idea of uh, medicine because the prospect of music was so mm -hmm. bright. And it was just a matter of years of expanding. Uh, the, see, I came in contact with professional musicians on club time mm -hmm. who were existing professionals in the mm -hmm. business. And uh, within three, three weeks after I graduated from college, I had three radio programs a week mm. in the Chicago area. And... Uh, that's the way it was, and it just sort of proliferated, and I've been at it now for 28 years. How many years have we been associated now, you as my producer? Well, I'm in my, uh, in my fifth year now, having completed my fifth year. I started mm -hmm. in October 1969. It's a good thing uh, somebody didn't ask me that question, because mm -hmm. it seems like a couple years. Yeah, you mean it's unbelievable, it's, isn't it? Uh, how many hours do you suppose you s have spent in the studio in this past year? Well, I know it's in excess of a thousand hours. Mm. That's mm. Uh, so you keep me pretty busy <laughs> because it's it's not just the hour in the studio. It's the uh, there's Mixed there's down preparation. Yeah. yeah, there's a preparation before you go into the studio, and, and uh, it's really very exciting because I think you know the you can look at a thousand hours and limit it to that, but if you think of that as an investment in communication music, uh, that that represents maybe 20 or 24 albums, mm -hmm. each of which is dedicated to the principle that uh, there's music on there that deserves to be heard, not only to be heard, but to be shared mm -hmm. and to be sung and to be played in churches and so on. Uh, it's it's a very interesting pyramid when, mm -hmm. when you... It is. It's a case of multiplication. That's right. The, the album gets started. Well, it's it, it's an exciting thing. It really is. It's exciting for me. I was just thinking, uh, we have spent a lot of hours together in the studio. Tremendous. Uh, and it's amazing that we're still friends, very good buddies. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have and, to. We play different roles in the studio, and uh, just like uh, many of life situations, uh, two forces working in concert with each other. Uh, even though they may have different personalities and so on. And they, they have different, different functions and they bring a different thing. It's you know. a blend of responsibilities and uh, it's really, really very exciting. Yeah, I have an idea. If some of our listeners walked in at certain times to a studio, to a <laughs> session, they would be rather sure. They would get the feeling that we didn't like each other. <laughs> but then if they'd see us afterwards, they'd that, know. That, that's for sure. Um, I happen to know that there's an interesting breakfast that goes on at your house every week and we'll mm -hmm. talk about that when we come back okay all right but uh, i'll let you pick the next tune well how about uh, miracle of grace miracle of grace very good this is bill cole from his album right now and miracle of grace display of miracles galore and daily I discover even more the bird in flight 
the dawn of day, the mighty oceans roar, and far away new places to explore. But all these wonders, great or small, are mere reflections of the greatest wonder of them all, the wonder of his love. He spoke a word and set the starry firmament in place, but for our life he Bill Cole singing Miracle of Grace, and this is Ralph Carmichael saying, please be here when we get back, because we've got some more music and some more conversation. Ralph Carmichael here, back again with my special guest today, Bill Cole. And Bill, before we uh, played that last selection and took a break, we referred to a rather interesting thing that happens around the Cole household uh, practically every week. Yeah, it happens what every is it? Thursday morning. Well... Uh, I guess uh, some kids know me as the Pancake King of uh, Cumberland Road. <laughs> uh, we've had a very interesting and fulfilling project uh, in our home in the last number of years. Uh, when we moved to our little town, we designed to build a home within walking circumference of uh, a walking distance of, of the schools. So... Our house is about a block and a half from the high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very interested in one of the uh, youth movements, uh, Christian youth movements in the country, Young Life. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have, as part of their program, a group called Campaigners, which is a group of uh, young people who have uh, found the Lord and become Christians and who want to study a little more. So in order to make their studying a little easier to take and uh, maybe as a a carrot in front of their nose. Mm -hmm. I, only in this case, we call it a pancake in front of their <laughs> nose. <laughs> we uh, we uh, open our house every Thursday. No, we have, probably for a half a dozen kids or so. Oh no, no. We have from thirty-five to fifty. Oh boy. <laughs> and uh, we, I think we're probably. I don't know of too many people on our block who have place settings for fifty kids. But <laughs> <laughs> we went out and we, you know, we put on a real spread for them, and they all come in six forty-five in the morning, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Mm. And they have breakfast. They sit around the living room and and uh, eat well. And then mm -hmm. they then the, the leader takes over, and they have about forty five minutes of uh, Bible study and prayer. And then they cut out to school about ten minutes before the bell rings. That's beautiful. And it's uh, that's been going on long enough now, so that kids come home from college and they they give us the old nudge and yeah. they say they want to have some pancakes, you know, <laughs> and they kid about it. But uh, Boy, it's it's really neat. Yeah, you know? and uh, you will be rewarded many, many times over. I hope not in pancakes. No, not in pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, occasionally I know that your phone rings and something comes up and you say, "All right, I think I'll make mm -hmm. room for this on my calendar." That still happens. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Yeah. What happened, like recent, the most recent well, thing that you've done? Uh, 
the most recent thing is uh, a new package for Walt Disney. Now, Over, this is not uh, producing. This is this performing. This is yeah. right. Over the years, uh, I've sort of gained a little reputation at Disney as being one of the singers in town that can do little novel mm -hmm. things and play roles and musical characters for the cartoons. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of things for the Disneylands, both here in uh, California mm -hmm. and, and in Florida. Mm -hmm. And those things are always a lot of fun, and I really try to make room for them because, mm -hmm. uh, well, everybody knows the, the character of the Disney outfit mm -hmm. and that they try to put on good family, solid entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, they're very creative and very imaginative. And You know, when, they, when, when you work for them, they come up to you and they've got a little... A little board with the characters all drawn out for you, and they say, "Okay, now here you're going to be a vulture, and uh, you're you're a very, you know, you're a very mean vulture." Well, then they give you a little eight-bar song, and they say, "Okay, now you're be a, a mean, mean vulture." vulture. Yeah, you sing it. See? <laughs> and uh, those kind of challenges are yeah. a lot of fun to work out, and uh, they give you enough time mm -hmm. so that if they don't like what you do the first time, you can think a little and try it again. Sure. And do it again, and uh, those kind of those kind of jobs are a lot of fun. And it's well, um, it's not going to change the world, but you no, know, but no, it's but the kind I of know. good entertainment because that I have. identify with that. Maybe once or twice a year, goodness knows, all I need is another arranging assignment. But w once or twice a year, the phone will ring, and uh, I'll just say to myself, "I believe I'll do this." You know, sure, and, uh, your spirit needs it. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. Uh, Bill, we got time for another song, and I believe I'll let you pick it. Okay, I want to uh, pick uh, a song that has a memory connected with you and me. Mm -hmm. I guess it must have been in 1961 or two. Uh, I'd come out to California to sing with a quartet, and um, I wasn't doing much work outside of that, but I got a call from, I forgot who, to uh, do an album with uh, Ralph Carmichael. And it was the first time that I had stepped into the studio with the other professionals here in town as an individual, just to step into the section. And uh, one of the tunes that we recorded that day was one which now is an old favorite and standard and known the world over. But it was... An exciting challenge at the time, and if you've ever heard the album, you'll know what I'm talking about. And the song is "The Savior Is Waiting." In the and album, uh, I guess, was the was Garden, the Garden of, the of the Heart. Garden of the Heart. And I knew at that time, when I heard the song, that uh, the world was going to hear that song. <laughs> and I just waited for the time when I could, like I said earlier, take it, and make it something of myself, and add to it, and. and uh, you gave me the opportunity on the album, so I'd like to have the people here. The Savior is waiting. No. 
And that was Bill Cole singing The Savior's Waiting. And Bill has been my guest today. Bill, thank you for well, sharing thank you. your time with it's us. Been great. And uh, we'll look forward to your next album and your next visit. Okay? Thank you very much. And uh, to our listeners, I say, meet us again around the radio. <laughs> 